Hi everyone and welcome to the first uh, big and amazing talk that we are expecting today. So we have our lead speaker Elizabeth Ruch from Keyside and without further delay, Elizabeth, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you so much. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, depending on where you're dialing in from. My name is Liz Rooch, and I'm the general manager of our quantum team here at Keysight Technologies. So in the next uh, approximately 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna be covering the following three topics. The first is a bit about my career path, uh, where I've been, uh, how I got to where I am, and perhaps where I'm going. Second is a bit about Keysight and our quantum team. And third is, getting into specifics of which open positions that we have that we're actively hiring for. So without further ado, let's jump in. If folks have questions or comments, please also put them in the chat and the moderator will interrupt me where appropriate um, during the presentation. So no problem with uh, interruptions, no need to hold your questions till the end. So let's start on a career path for myself. I was told by some of the event organizers that this might be an interesting exercise as many of you might be just starting your career journey and uh, wondering how does one become a general manager in a large high-tech company? So if you look at my resume today, uh, I've had 28 years of experience in industry, 18 years of international uh, management experience, I've worked in a variety of locations for our company, uh, namely East Coast, Boston, uh, West Coast, Santa Rosa, California, uh, overseas in Beijing, China, and also uh, in Colorado as well with some of our high-speed digital products. So moved around quite a bit. I'm a electrical engineer by study with an MBA uh, 10 years into my career. Uh, I am not a quantum physicist, uh, but I can say with certainty, I do use my technical skills and technical learning each day to help uh, enable the quantum revolution that, uh, that many of us are working on. I've also been uh, recognized from an industry perspective with a number of awards over the years. Um, quite honestly, these are things I never early in my career dreamed of or aspired to. Um, and I think the learning here is when you get nominated for some of these things and uh, and are actually selected from some of them, uh, it's made me realize that I'm a, a beacon or a responsible um, you know, woman in industry that's trying to provide uh, inspiration for others. So um, that's been an interesting learning for me as well. But where did this journey start? So. I actually started working for a company called Hewlett Packard in 1994. And I was a summer intern in the Boston office. At that time, I actually had responsibility uh, for two areas. One was helping promote uh, HP's offering to universities for uh, basic instruments like oscilloscopes and multimeters and power supplies that might be used in a common laboratory. And my second responsibility was actually doing a customer communication around a company that we had acquired called KLAN that was involved in cable TV uh, test. Uh, I followed up, enjoyed this internship so much that I followed up and uh, did an internship in New Jersey uh, while I did my last semester at Rutgers University for engineering. Uh, and in that case, I was working with some small startup businesses uh, that were in the New York, New Jersey metro area. So I uh, had a great experience in, uh, in both of those offices, but it should be of note that they were actually sales offices for HP, uh, not R&D assignments. It was a lot of customer communication. So many of my engineering colleagues said, boy, you know, you're wasting your degree by going into a, a technical sales role. Um, why aren't you going into R&D? Why aren't you going to be a software programmer? Uh, but those two summer experiences really encouraged me to explore this space further. And I actually spent 10 years, um, four years as an account manager and six years as a district manager in high tech sales for Hewlett Packard. 
uh, during that time, that gave me experience to uh, RF and microwave technology, as well as high-speed digital and optical technology. And my primary accounts were aerospace defense customers like Raytheon that was building radar and uh, satellite systems, uh, as well as very small semiconductor um, components made by analog devices, Skyworks, Maycom, and others. Um, turns out there's a lot of, of fabs, semiconductor fabs in the New England area. Um, so got a rich experience in, uh, in technical sales and technical sales management. But after about eight or nine years said, this is great, but not something that I want to be doing my entire life. So I decided that I wanted to move to California to work in some of our business units to understand how product decisions were made. How do we decide to discontinue products? How do we decide to build new products? Um, how are our products deployed in multiple markets as well as globally? Uh, because when I was in Boston, many people visited from California and they had just returned from Paris or just returned from Japan and all these exotic places that I never dreamed before of visiting. So made the big move as far as I could move without swimming to California. During that transition, uh, I went from having, I'd say, a role for about 10 years to having maybe six different roles in an 18-month window. And this is while I was also completing my, my MBA, my executive MBA at Boston University. Part of this was because I was making a transition from the field team to the factory team. Uh, part of this was in the organizations that I had landed in, there was a bunch of reorgs going on. So I was getting bounced from group to group. Uh, and part of it was that, again, I was in this MBA full-time work, full-time school mode where I had said I'd actually like to step out of management for a while to complete my degree. So while that was a really bumpy road, I didn't expect it to be so many jobs. Uh, I learned something from each of them and uh, really relish that time in, uh, in retrospect. So after completing my degree and formally moving to California, I was kind of working remotely for that Santa Rosa role for about 18 months. I got more settled into what I describe as global uh, sales management and business development for some of our larger organizations in the company. These divisions were several hundred million dollars um, uh, in size and uh, again, played into all markets, aerospace defense, wireless, automotive, and semiconductor to name a few. So I was managing at that time a global team of business development people I had direct reports in 14 different countries, so learned a lot about different cultures uh, and had the opportunity to travel to meet customers in, uh, in many, many countries and regions. And that was fun, did that for about five years. Um, but at that stage, when I had started traveling, uh, I got the itch to potentially uh, work overseas. And that was where my interest in working, living and working in China came about. So I actually asked my management if I could take an interim job, this applications marketing and planning role, which was pure software based because it would actually provide a stepping stone for me and my learning uh, for both planning and marketing, not selling, not business development, uh, for key applications where the R&D teams were actually located in China and Japan. So did that role for about two years and learned a lot about uh, software and software development. And in parallel with that, managed our systems business uh, that was actually building integrated test systems for companies like Alcatel-Lucent, building out their 4G base stations, or Motorola, building out their police fire radio uh, systems. So really great um, experience. And uh, actually, our team was recognized, our broader team was recognized for the CEO award uh, for a new product introduction we did during that time. Uh, that was um, 2009, and uh, the team is depicted there. So that was a real, real great honor. So decided that I wanted to pick up and move to Beijing, China. Um, I had traveled to China 14 times before living there. And um, my standard headline I give here is that um, living and working in China is far different than coming in for a few days and staying at the Marriott. 
Um, there was a lot of things that I had to go through in terms of cultural learning and um, uh, learning about the team, motivating the team, uh, both on the division side. These were people that had global experience, as well as about a year into my assignment, I was asked to take on the local marketing team as well, responsible for um, new product introductions, meetings with the press, uh, trade shows, managing all of our demo equipment, many, many functions. Um, and that was a, a really special time. Uh, that was in um, 2013 to 2015 is when I was in China. So <clears throat> really uh, enjoyed that experience. And during that time, did a lot with uh, 5G uh, research and development with some of the local companies there. Uh, after completing the role in Beijing, I actually came back to the US uh, to work in our high-speed digital group, which is located in Colorado Springs. Um, this seemed like a good idea because uh, first, they were one of the top divisions in the company um, with really hot products and a really energetic team. Um, it was also in Colorado and I like to ski, so bought my season pass and um, was ready to be planted in Colorado for, for quite some time. But I'd say about six months into that role, the company decided to reorganize from product segments to industry segments. And as such, I moved back to Santa Rosa. So at that time, uh, I actually moved to a pure software business, uh, our simulation business, our ESOF business, which are tools that customers use before they even build their first prototype. Um, so I was again, working in RF microwave and high-speed digital but from a design, pure design perspective and uh, uh, created a program where we uh, created enterprise agreements for our large accounts, medium accounts, as well as a startup program and, um, and drove that for about uh, four years. And at the end of that journey, uh, there was a, a time where I popped up my head and started to look around to think about what's next in the next two or three years and happened upon an opportunity to lead our quantum engineering solutions team um, in a matter of two or three months, not two or three years. Um, so that opportunity materialized a lot faster than I had expected. And that gave me an opportunity to move back to, uh, uh, to Boston or to Cambridge, Massachusetts um, and get back to my hometown to lead both uh, R&D and marketing resources here locally in Cambridge as well as be closer in time zone to uh, more than 75% of my team that's located uh, either in Cambridge, in Waterloo, Canada, or in some locations in, uh, in Europe. So it was quite a ride. It actually ties together a lot of my past experience um, in, uh, in the company. And uh, I think I'm getting a PhD in quantum physics on the side from all the learnings from the, uh, the wonderful physicists that have joined join Keysight on this journey. Um, I was taught by an early mentor once as I'm introducing myself to not just do a professional intro, but a personal intro. Um, so some of the things that I like to do while I'm not working are uh, take lots of pictures. So I'm a photographer. Um, I also enjoy travel. So I've had the opportunity to travel to over 64 countries so far. I'd probably guess um, close to 50 of those for work. Um, so really love interacting with customers and my team internationally. Um, I'm also a big sports fan. So taking in local sports in Boston or around the globe. And I'm also pretty passionate about volunteer work. So more notably, uh, recently I volunteered to be the executive sponsor uh, for the Women in Quantum Networking uh, and Mentoring Program rather. So that's given me the opportunity to meet um, some very neat people in, uh, in the quantum industry. So you'll usually find me, if not in front of a Zoom call, um, outside doing anything active and uh, engaging. So looking forward to starting to get back on the road again and travel. So that's a bit about the career journey. I'd like to focus now on Keysight's role in quantum and uh, what opportunities we might have for some of you to potentially join us. And uh, we'll, we'll jump into that here. So first off, uh, Keysight is actually focused on three main areas in the quantum space. Uh, you might see a lot from us in quantum computing because that's where uh, we've been focused and focused in our hiring the past several years, 
working with uh, major companies uh, as well as smaller startups and universities. Uh, however, we also have a very strong business in quantum communications, leveraging a lot of our product lines uh, with respect to optical uh, transmission and receive, as well as quantum sensing. Uh, and that could be everything from precision signal generators to um, arbitrary waveform generators and other uh, platforms from Keysight. Uh, in total, we have uh, over 25 different product lines uh, that we're providing into the quantum space. So lots of opportunity for, uh, for growth. And again, externally, we've been more communicating in the quantum computing space to date. One of the things I like to highlight is uh, why is Keysight and why is Keysight's quantum team a great place to work when I'm talking to uh, potential, potential candidates and uh, doing succession planning. So I'm gonna cover each of these in detail in, uh, in the following slides. The first is that uh, the team has a very strong uh, customer focus. And I think that started from the beginning in 2016 when we got in this space. Again, working with some key customers as well as some key universities. You can see here uh, that some of the members of our team uh, led collaboration efforts that spanned the Boulder cryogenic testbed in Colorado uh, with work from Google and NIST and others in the superconducting space. Um, and you hear a lot about us from superconducting. However, we're engaged in all different uh, qubit topologies. Another example here over in Europe in working with uh, TU Delft in their spin qubit research. And again, we've got examples on our website from working with others in uh, trapped ion and other, other topologies. So part of this, I think, is the nature of the team. And part of this is my uh, leadership style and background with my first 10 years being very customer focused, um, that we want to make sure customers are a part of our development cycle. The second is that we've built a really uh, deep team uh, in terms of quantum expertise. We've done this in a combination of both acquisitions. You can see three acquisitions from 2016 to 2021, as well as industry hires uh, as well from the quantum industry. So the folks from Cygnodyne that joined us in 2016 come from a trapped ion background. Uh, the folks from Labra that joined us in 2019 come from a superconducting background. And the quantum benchmark team, which just joined us in 2021, uh, actually has applicability not just for customers that are developing quantum computers, but also customers that are using quantum computers to try to run uh, algorithms. So uh, what they bring to the table is uh, error diagnostics, error suppression, and over time, ultimately error correction for these inherently noisy machines. So, uh, we're actively involved, as I said, with customers, um, as well as industry consortia. We joined the QEDC in 2018, and um, Dr. Eric Holland was uh, just recently, I think in December of last year, elected to the large company seat in QEDC um, uh, as Keysight, as a member of Keysight, and uh, is very engaged with a number of people in, uh, in the ecosystem. So uh, very deep expertise uh, with uh, QES and the quantum team. The third thing I'd say is that we've got uh, really great people in a broad set of locations. Um, so one of the challenges is that we're not all co-located, but I'd say one of the advantages is that that gives us quite a uh, diversity set of thought in terms of uh, experience, people that have been with the company like myself for 28 years, as well as people that have joined just within the past 12 months. Um, so level of experience, internal and external. Um, we've got a significant number of, of women in the quantum team. I've lost track, but I think it's far more than, uh, than 20%. Uh, great representation in terms of age and some people that we've recently hired out of university, um, geography and cultural footprint, uh, et cetera. So, uh, great opportunities within the group, and then also moving um, within uh, geographic locations. We've recently moved somebody from Barcelona, Spain, to be located in Germany uh, to participate in the MATQ project there. Um, so I don't have a German German uh, pin on the board, but lots of opportunities to, uh, to do extended assignments in different regions. 
The fourth is that uh, we really are trying to provide not just point solutions, but a full stack of solutions from hardware to software um, for the quantum industry. Again, some of that has been done through acquisition and some through internal development. Uh, we've got a wide set of offerings uh, from general purpose equipment, as well as dedicated offerings in our qubit control systems to uh, help manipulate uh, qubits in these quantum computers. So really wide uh, portfolio and even including some of our EDA tools, our simulation tools that I mentioned uh, had worked in that group just before joining the quantum team. Last but not least, uh, I think we have a very strong company culture. And one of the reasons why I've stayed here this long, in addition to working in so many businesses in the company, uh, is that this traces back to our roots as Hewlett Packard. Um, so I usually say 28 years, one company, three names. It's evolved from being Hewlett Packard uh, to then Agilent around the 2000 timeframe, and then Keysight uh, for the past seven years. Uh, so. We've tried to keep uh, the core things in the culture from Hewlett Packard that were the good and enhancing that with some things um, in terms of speed and accountability with, uh, with Keysight, trying to move quickly and uh, supporting the market makers. So uh, customer success is at the, the core of our values, um, but you can see a big focus on uh, things like bringing in market insight, uh, developing our employees over time. You can see many of us have worked in different segments and bringing that experience to, uh, to quantum has been, been very fulfilling. So those are some of the, uh, the things I like to highlight again when talking to, uh, to folks about Keysight and our journey in general, as well as our journey in quantum. So last but not least, wanted to talk about some open positions and then uh, hopefully open it up for some questions here. So uh, we are hiring a wide set of people um, in, uh, in the quantum space. Um, we're even hiring in the EDA space as well. We've got uh, some openings right now for R&D engineers, uh, as well as some business development and planning engineers in our uh, design simulation tools, as I mentioned. Uh, directly in my team, we currently have openings for quantum physicists as well as software engineers. Um, we do have a team of FPGA engineers as well, not currently hiring in that group, but always uh, a skill set that seems to be in demand. Uh, and then we've got openings on keysight.com right now for business development as well as technical marketing and uh, summer internships across three of our R&D teams. So one of the things I like to say in quantum is that we need quantum physicists, but we also need a lot of other engineers in order to uh, make these systems work. And you can see by the breadth of postings that um, that uh, is in fact the case. For those of you that are still perhaps new in the space, I wanted to kind of uh, give you a visual as to why that's so. If you look at a quantum computer at a trade show, you might see an image on the left uh, or on the right that you can uh, find from IBM. And I usually say this is the marketing team job to uh, make these things look very sleek and easy to use. But the reality is if you're trying to operate a quantum computer in the lab, there's a lot of complexity to it. Uh, we need people with cryogenic expertise uh, <laughs> to operate things like cryostats, in this case provided by Blue Force. Uh, we need a lot of control electronics uh, expertise, and you see lots of wiring there, lots of cables, um, you know, signal integrity issues to worry about, uh, power issues, calibrating all these systems is very complex. And uh, it it's, takes a village in order to solve some of these problems. So encourage uh, folks to think about, you know, your various backgrounds and how you can contribute in, uh, in this space. Everything down to even chipset design, right, for the QPU that's uh, sitting at the bottom of this cryostat on the, uh, the right-hand side of the slide. If you're interested in learning more about uh, Keysight solutions and uh, some of the, the depth on the technology, whether it be superconducting or trapped ion or others, encourage you to look at our Keysight University uh, website or keysight.com page for quantum. Um, these classes on Keysight University are free. Um, they're typically an hour or less in duration. 
And even if you're a quantum physicist and want to learn more about, say, RF and microwave technology and how you could use a network analyzer, you'll find that content out there as well. So I encourage you to sign up for, uh, for that platform. And all these classes can be um, viewed on demand, so at, uh, at your leisure. Also, if you're interested in following us on social media to see what we're up to in terms of working with customers, uh, industry updates, uh, breaking news, uh, please follow us on social media. Uh, we've got a presence on all the major channels, whether it be Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, and others. So uh, encourage you to follow us there as well. And last but not least, uh, as I mentioned, we've got uh, openings today. So I uh, have contact information there for a number of the hiring managers on the right, as well as some of our Keysight recruiters on the left. But if you go to jobs.keysight.com and uh, type in quantum, you should be able to find the specific roles that I've mentioned uh, quite easily. So with that, I know we have a 1240 Eastern stop. I'm going to perhaps uh, stop sharing screen here and see if uh, there's any questions. Have there been any questions that have uh, entered the chat? Ah, now that I can see the chat, <laughs> looks like there's a few. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, I, I really like the overview that, that you did from your career and, and all what you're doing at Keysight. I, I must say, wow, <laughs> that's, that's really amazing. Um, I, I think from the, from the questions that I have seen in the chat, um, one question that I have seen repeating a lot is, uh, do you offer internships? But I have seen that somebody's going to be taking care of interns as well in the, in the booth, right? That's correct. We have three open internship jobs right now. Uh, Two are in research and development, and one is in marketing. Um, and I would say that in general, um, internships don't just have to be in the summer. Right now, we're hiring for summer. But as you saw, I was an intern uh, while finishing up my degree as well. So if anybody's interested in internships, please contact us. Um, I also see a question here about um, remote jobs from Europe. Um, and short answer is absolutely yes. My team is spread out over 10 locations. so. Uh, we have opportunities in the uh, U.S. and Europe currently. Um, and over time, you know, we may be expanding into some of the other regions as well with my direct reports. So um, please, uh, please contact us. I've seen one question, uh, and I think this is always what some people say. I have just a bachelor's and I know the PhD in physics. Can I find a job in quantum? Absolutely. Yeah. So we had um, someone with a bachelor's degree in physics that was pursuing a master's degree in physics, um, primarily to be landed in a job at Keysight. And uh, after doing three internships with us, we said, you know, you don't need to, to, to uh, complete a master's degree in order to get hired. And we just hired that intern um, a few months ago. Uh, he's located in Canada, actually. Um, so I would say it's not required. Um, we have a wonderful set of quantum PhDs in the team. Um, and we also have people with just masters or just bachelors. Um, so not, uh, not a hard requirement, but of course it depends on the role. So. Great. Um, are you going to be available at the booth, Elizabeth, if people want to ask you any, any more questions more in private? Yeah. So I don't believe that I'll be at the booth today. I'm actually going to visit a customer, um, this afternoon. <laughs> um, I'm actually traveling this week, but, um, uh, I know my team will be there and, uh, more than happy to take questions uh, through email, so I can put my email in the chat uh, as well. But I think the team at the booth will be um, uh, perfect to talk to that. We've got a lot of recent hires as well as some of the uh, the hiring managers that'll be there. Um, I see some questions in the chat just about, in general, remote work, remote work. That is that is um, a bit of the world we're living in these days. Yes. Um, so certainly open to that. but. Even for any of you, whether it's with Keysight or with other companies, um, thinking about as people are more returning to work and returning to office, right, and you're joining a new company, what your ramp up and experience will be if you're truly remote from the team you're in, right, versus trying to uh, ramp up more quickly, uh, at least close to a location. So um, right now, we've all been remote working for two years and still producing great business results, but 
we're also anxious to get back in offices as well. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's possible, but think about it, not just from the employer standpoint, but from your personal development. That's a good point. Okay, I think we are now at the end of the time uh, of, of your time here. But yeah, thanks again, Elizabeth. It was really amazing talk. And yeah, please just uh, go and visit the Keysight booth later on and hope that you find the job of your dreams with Keysight. <laughs> thanks. Elizabeth. Great. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.